In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to take you through the use of legend components. So I've got a, a demo project here. I've just got two sections of wall and I've got a couple of doors in there. So we're going to make legends for the walls and legends for the doors. So to use legend components, you need legend views. So in your project browser, you'll have a group there called legends. Now, in order to use legend components, we need legend views. So let's create those now. So I've got a view and legend. Dismiss that there. So I'm going to call the first one wall types. That gets added into the legends group. We'll create our second one now in readiness. So go back to legend and door types. So there's nothing on those legend views currently. Now, the, I'll mention here that a great property of the legend view type is that the actual view can be added to as many sheets as you need. So you may have come across the fact already in Revit that normally most of your views can only be added to one sheet. So once you put like, let's say for example, this level zero floor plan onto a specific sheet, you can't then add that specific view to another sheet. Uh, legend views are different uh, or behave differently. You can add, let's say this door types legend that we're going to create to as many sheets um, as you need, which is really useful because if there are updates to that legend, you can just uh, update it here when we've, we've got something to, to see. And obviously all the sheets that, that appears on gets updated all in one go. So let's go ahead and add some components, legend components to this door legend. So to do so, we go to annotate and you're looking on the detail panel for this tool here, component, and a little drop down until you see legend component. Now, just before I add that, I'm just gonna show you what happens if you're on any other type of view. So let's say a floor plan view. You can see there that if you hit the drop down, you've got access to two of the other tools, detail component and repeating detail component, but legend component is grayed out. And that's because this legend component can only be used on a legend view. So let's go back to our door types, go back into there and you can see indeed now we can use that. So hit legend component. Now, if you look on the options bar, a little drop down on the left there, family. This is a list of all the Revit components that you can create a legend component for. Now this is basically uh, a list of all the families or all the components that are in your current project, not necessarily in your model. So you've seen in the, 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 the plan view previously that there is very little in this model. There's two walls and there's two doors. However, we've got that drop down. You can see all sorts of things in here, columns, ceilings, cable trays, etc. That's because these components, be it um, loadable components or system families, have been def defined in the Revit template that I used for this project. So the good thing about this is you can create your legend views before you actually start building your model, say, be because you've got access to all the families that are available to you, not just the ones that you've actually used so far in building up your model. So we're already on doors there, but let's just show you back in here. So there are the doors we've got in this project. So let's uh, pick that one there. Now, the next thing on the options bar, you got is this drop down, the choice of view. Now this will depend on exactly what type of element um, it is. So. When we do walls in a second, you'll see you've got some different sort of um, naming conventions here. So for, for doors, you can either choose the floor plan, the elevation from the front or elevation from the back. So let's do elevation from the front. So we'll place that down. These are actual size and there's the scales. You can change the scales you could do in any other Revit view. Um, let's go and pick another door and put that in. So from here, you could do things like um, add critical dimensions, etc. 
put some text, put some notes in there. So basically create your legend of all the different door types that you want to, to, to um, communicate to somebody. Let's do the same for wall types. So swap over to the blank wall type legend that we created. Component, want to add a legend component. And let's go down and again. Here are all the system families for walls that we've currently got defined in this project based on the template that I used. So let's go and pick one of those. And this is what I meant by um, the fact that this other drop down changes depending on, on what it is. So you can see for a wall, you've got a choice between a floor plan or a section of wall. So quite often, section of walls useful. Now, we're just seeing um, a course fill there. That's because the, the detail set to course, we put it on fine. You'll actually see all the layers that are made up in that section of wall for that particular type. Now it's important to note that what you're seeing here is not a call out. It's not a, a section through your model. It is just Revit displaying a sample piece of that system family of wall of that particular type. So again, you can imagine um, let's say your practice works with um, half a dozen standard wall types on most projects. What you can do is uh, define those wall buildups in your office template. You can then create a wall type schedule and add them to it, get them all detailed up and have that ready to go on each brand new project because it's already in your template before you've even started modeling anything at all.